Hey guys, it's Paul Finch here. Um, I've decided to go ahead and start my Axis and Allies video series. Um, this is Axis and Allies Global 1940, second edition. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing an overview of the strategy for each country. Um, what they should do, what they shouldn't do, what they should buy, what they shouldn't buy. Um, and this is going to be geared more towards people who have played the game. Uh, multiple times or who know the rules and just are having bad luck with strategy so uh, let's go and get started um, Germany starts out with thirty dollars and uh, I don't like to spend any money because it keeps the British guessing because um, then they don't know if I'm going sea line or towards Russia and if I do that then that means it forces them to build land units on London instead of uh, air and naval units that can be used in London or uh, Africa and so uh, it just it just keeps Great Britain uh, thinking on its toes. Now, I as Germany know that Italy has to be making about twenty dollars, and has to be a major threat in the uh, Mediterranean. However, usually what happens is is Great Britain will take this fleet and this army, and some other planes and some other ships that it can reach, um, and it will destroy uh, this fleet, this fleet, and this army if they're ambitious. Um, and so uh, I found two ways of helping Italy and uh, one of them I can do now the other one's a non-combative movement so I will have to uh, show you guys that in a minute um, so first things off is usually I found that Great Britain throws in this cruiser and they'll go one two three because of this naval base and then they'll throw in a fighter and take out the destroyer and cr uh, transport there and uh, I want to get rid of this cruiser so I'm going to send in a sub from 103 and a sub from 108. And that should get rid of the cruiser. we got about a 60% chance of winning. Uh, we've got uh, two sneak attacks from those subs, so we have a good chance of winning. Uh, we take out that cruiser, uh, and if we're left with some subs, then we can go in the Mediterranean. Or then we can come back and convoy raid or stop some of these destroyers or uh, do whatever we want with them. Now, as, great, uh, as Germany... We have to get rid of these British uh, uh, capital ships. Um, if we don't, they just keep them and uh, build on them. Ooh, I'm sorry, guys. That's blurry. There we go. Um, if we don't, then they just uh, keep them, and then they'll build on them. And then D-Day will happen sooner uh, rather than later, and we would much rather have that later. So first got to take it out. So we're going to take a sub from 118 and a sub from 124. I'm going to take this battleship from C zone 113 into here. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to set it out, uh, out here. Um, now, as you see, we only have uh, a few naval units, so we're going to have to use air power. Now, I figured out a way to split up the air power so that we have a, about a 100% chance of winning if Great Britain doesn't scramble, and about an 80% chance of winning if they do scramble. And the reason why I like to do that is because I want to show Great Britain that, hey, we're destroying these ships, and even if you do try to save them with your air force, you still have a, a very high chance of losing. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot, but you're going to lose everything. Um, and so basically a lot of British players get scared, and they'll, they'll stay back, and they will uh, keep their fighters alive for another day, especially since they need them for uh, down here in the Mediterranean. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a fighter from Norway, a fighter from uh, Holland, Belgium, a tactical from Western Germany, and a strategic bomber from Germany. Then everything else is going to come down here. So we're going to have a tactical from Germany, uh, two tacticals from Western Germany, so that makes three, two fighters from Western Germany, and a strategic bomber from Germany. All right, now uh, we've taken care of the majority of the British Navy. We got uh, the Northern Fleet, Southern Fleet, this lone cruiser. Now the only thing that's left is these two destroyers and transports. Now you can only deal with one of them. Um, I prefer to deal with this one. Uh, because if I can get rid of it, then these land units in Canada are stuck and they can't make it to Great Britain to help defend uh, the, uh, London, the capital. So I usually send in this uh, lone sub and take a gamble with the dice, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, there's not much else you can do with that sub. I mean, you can come over here on convoy raid, uh, you could take out those destroyers, you could set it up for uh, defensive measures later, but I prefer to go on the offensive as much as possible round one. Uh, and if you get rid of it, then those those units are stuck there. If not, you've only lost six dollars. No biggie, right? All right. Now we got to do all of our land stuff. So we're going to take three infantry from Norway, move them into Finland, and get that extra four 
uh, infantry and an extra two dollars. Take an infantry from Romania and move it into Bulgaria. Now I know that a lot of people don't like uh, having Germany take Bulgaria and Yugoslavia. They like uh, Italy to take those because Italy needs the money. However, I uh, prefer that Germany take those spaces just because Germany could use the extra four infantry whenever they go in against Russia. I feel like Russia is a much bigger threat than Great Britain is, especially if Germany does it right. If Germany plays very well and rolls well, uh, then Great Britain uh, is uh, definitely hurt and is not doing as well as they could be. And that helps Italy out in uh, so many ways. And especially if Germany decides to go Operation Sea Lion, then uh, that definitely helps Italy out. So I feel like uh, Germany could use um, uh, the four extra infantry and the extra three dollars. Um, and then we're going to take over Yugoslavia. We're going to send in six infantry from Greater Southern Germany, two artillery from Greater Southern Germany, uh, two infantry from Slovakia, Hungary, and an infantry from Romania. So that makes three. And then we're going to take a tank from Romania, a tank from Slovakia, Hungary, and a tank from Poland. And the reason why I send in so much is because Yugoslavia does only have five infantry, but it is five infantry. And I don't want to lose a whole lot of units. I don't want to have to do multiple dice battles. I want to just kill them off, take the money, go home, uh, uh, just take the $2, and then uh, start focusing on Russia. And now the biggest part is we want to take over France. Now, I personally like to take over Normandy and France at the same time. Uh, and then Italy will come in and finish up southern France because I don't like having extra French units in Europe. Um, I just want to get rid of them uh, first turn. Uh, it's just a pain. Sometimes they'll take uh, Holland, Belgium. Sometimes they'll mount a, uh, mount a counter offensive. And I'd just much rather just get rid of them and be done with it uh, as soon as possible. So I'm going to take two infantry from Holland, Belgium. So that leaves. Uh, two infantry left. So two infantry into Normandy, a tank into Normandy, and a mech for, into Normandy. Tank came from Holland, Belgium. Mech came from Western, Germ uh, Western Germany. And everything else is going to go into France. So we got three infantry from Western Germany, plus two infantry from Holland, Belgium, which makes five. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up on a battle board because this is a big battle. It's an important battle, too. And then we're going to have an artillery from Western Germany and two artillery from Holland, Belgium. So we're going to have three total artillery. And then we're going to uh, have three mechs. Uh, from uh, Western Germany. And then we're going to have two tanks from Holland, Belgium and three tanks from Greater Southern Germany. So we're going to have a total of five tanks. Now, I know that a lot of people also don't like to uh, send in air units into France because they feel like it's a big waste of uh, 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 air units, and they don't want to risk it with uh, any aircraft gun that's sitting here in France. I'm going to go ahead and set this up on a battle board for you guys. Um, however, I've found that it's much easier to take over France if you have six tanks uh, compared to uh, five tanks. But I always use one tank in the uh, invasion of Normandy, and so I have to make up for that somehow. And the way I do that is I take this tactical from Poland and throw it in here with the uh, attack on France. And uh, I'm willing to risk the dice roll on the anti-aircraft gun because uh, anti-aircraft guns aren't super effective. Uh, it's really hard to roll a one, especially when you're only rolling one dice. Um, uh, it's just not very likely that my uh, tactical bomber will get shot down. Um, I think that's it. So we've got uh, the luck dice here. Should take out this cruiser. Uh, got a 100% chance of winning here, 100% chance of winning here, so long as they don't scramble. Uh, we'll be taking Finland and Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, France, and Normandy. Um, I think that's it, and I will see you in the next video for the dice